Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Are you guys ready for another epic testing video? Well, I sure am because I've been working on this one for about three months now. In today's video, I'm putting eight different under eye concealers to the test to see which one works best on more mature, less than perfect under eyes. So I'm 57 years old. If you're new here, welcome. Hi, I'm Angie. And so because I'm 57 and was a sun worshiper in my past, I have under eye wrinkles. I have under eye puffiness. I don't have a ton of under eye darkness, but I do have a little bit. You'll see in the before pictures. We will be looking at it all super up close and putting each concealer to an eight hour wear test. So the way I do these testing videos is I wear each concealer for one day. I apply them each the exact same way with the exact same base underneath and then I powder one eye, but I leave the other eye unset to see how the concealer wears on its own without setting powder and if there's any difference with setting powder. For all the testing, I use the exact same powder for every single one, and that's the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores HD Powder. I think it makes such a huge difference in how my concealer looks, and I just love it. But you'll see the difference in the daily footage. Oh yeah, and the last thing is that if I hate a concealer that you love, don't get offended. It's just because this didn't work for me. As you know, everyone's under eye issues are different. Everyone's under eye skin is different. But if your skin is kind of like mine, what works for me may work really well for you. Let's get started. We have a lot to go over. I'm going to be reviewing these from worst to best. All right, so let's kick it off with a bang with e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. This is $6 for 0.2 ounces. This is the original camo concealer. I know that they've released a hydrating camo concealer. I will include the hydrating in the next round of testing in a few months. This comes in 26 shades and I picked it up in medium sand. This is supposed to be a full coverage concealer for normal to oily skin with a matte finish that's quick drying and has 16 hours of wear time. This is a creamy emollient feeling concealer with an oversized doe foot applicator. The first coat goes on a little patchy with light to medium coverage. I was kind of surprised that this wasn't full, full coverage right out of the gate. You'll notice that I don't take the doe foot and just smear a big bunch of concealer underneath my eyes. That applies way too much concealer for me at my age and my level of wrinkles. I find that less is more. I try to use the least amount of concealer that I can get away with. So in this case, I did add a little more just to the inner corner to build up the coverage. And I think it did give nice high medium to full coverage. It does skip over pores though, giving a spotty effect under the eyes and accentuating pores on the cheeks. It's got a soft satin finish that's brightening under the eyes, but it also does accentuate under eye puffiness. With setting powder, my under eye area looks much less puffy and the coverage looks solid and smooth, but also makes it look a little bit dry and a little bit crepey up close. I actually really like the way this one looked when I first put it on and thought, oh wow, great, it's gonna be a new winner and it's only $6. Well, I'm only an hour and 45 minutes in with this one and oh my God, do not wear this without setting it. The set eye looks just fine, but over here, it's a hot mess. It is so crinkled. So here's the set eye, still nice and smooth and looking good. And then this eye. After four hours, both eyes were looking pretty dry and cakey with major cracking on the non-set side. The side with the setting powder had less settling, but still it was a little bit too much settling for my liking. By eight hours, it just looked cakey and gross, and that's why, sadly, the e.l.f. 16-hour camo concealer was the worst in this round of testing. Up next is Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Concealer. This retails for $34 for 
0.2 ounces. It comes in 22 shades. I got it in the shade Cedar. The marketing spiel on this guy is that it is a full coverage, weightless, waterproof concealer with innovative microspherical powders that blur and brighten for up to 16 hours of instant skin perfection. Yes, I do want my skin to be instantly perfected. Who doesn't? Uh, it goes on to say that this crease resistant, note those words, light reflecting liquid concealer blends seamlessly into skin and diffuses the look of pores and fine lines. Anyway, so in real life, this is a medium bodied liquid concealer with a diamond shaped applicator. A little does go a long way, but it dries super fast. So you have to work really quickly to get it on there. Because it dries so quickly, it's more difficult to blend at the outer edges. The first coat gives pretty good medium coverage. It has a luminous finish that accentuates puffiness. Adding setting powder makes it look dry and extra crepey. It skipped over pores, accentuating them, but from a distance, it did look smooth with good coverage. Right, and this is why I like to set my under eye concealer and I'm not into luminous concealer because the luminosity accentuates the puffiness in my little eye bag, which you can see. And once I have it powdered down and it's all matte, then it is much smoother. After only five minutes, the unset side was starting to crease at the inner corner already. By four hours, the unset eye was really aging me. It looked patchy, it was partially worn off already, and had settled into all my wrinkles. The set side looked dry and crepey with patchy wear at the inner corner and some settling into the under eye wrinkles. By eight hours, the coverage was still solid everywhere except at the inner corners where it's needed. It was completely solid on my cheeks where it was accentuating pores and it was looking dry, cakey, and wrinkled and cracked everywhere else. Up next is Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is $18 for 0.17 ounces. It comes in 12 shades. I got it in the shade G10. The marketing on this one is that it is a buildable concealer that covers everything from dark circles to blemishes and redness with a dewy, glowy finish. It comes in a pot and it has a pretty thick emollient feel. I used the brush to get some of this concealer out of the pot and applied it to my under eyes like I do with all my other concealers and then blended it out with my fingers. It definitely blended a little bit patchy to start and it gave very sheer to light medium coverage. I did add a little bit more at the inner corners to build it up. I felt like my under eye area looked brightened. It has a luminous finish that does accentuate puffiness, but also feels hydrating. The side with setting powder looked smooth, but the darkness wasn't completely covered. At the four hour check-in, neither eye looked fantastic. There was settling into wrinkles underneath both the eye with the setting powder and way more settling into wrinkles underneath the eye without the setting powder. At eight hours, I actually didn't think it looked terrible from a distance and it didn't look too much more worn off than it had at four, but nevertheless, it did still settle pretty badly into wrinkles on the eye without the setting powder and not as badly underneath the eye with the setting powder. So it looked better longer than the two that were the worst. Next up is Clay de Peau Concealer SPF 25. This retails for $73 for 0.17 ounces. It comes in six shades and I got it in beige. The marketing on this one promises it to be a long lasting full coverage concealer with SPF 25. That's pretty much all they say about it. Pretty basic marketing. It's a stick concealer. I wasn't sure what was the best way to apply. I just used the warmth of my finger to just kind of rub the end of the bullet and then tapped it underneath my eyes. That worked out really well and gave me medium coverage with the first pass, which I built up with a second pass to full coverage. First impression on that one, I think it looks nice. It looks really smooth. It's brightening. I feel like the color is good. The coverage is good. 
and it's not overly luminous. I will still powder the one eye and not the other. Adding setting powder makes it look matte and super smooth and reduces the look of puffiness, but also makes it look a little bit dry and a little bit crepey up close. In the 10 minutes that it took to put on the rest of my makeup, the unpowdered side had cracked and settled into wrinkles. After four hours, the powdered side still looked solid with good coverage of discolorations from a distance, but wrinkles looked cracked and accentuated. The unset side is settled into wrinkles and wearing off and breaking up at the inner corner. At eight hours, the powdered side coverage is still looking really, really solid. The little diagonal wrinkles at the inner corner are starting to show. The unset side is very much accentuating my wrinkles. So while I kind of like the look of this one at first and I like the finish of it, it just didn't wear well throughout the day. All right, next up is L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Concealer with Hydrating Serum. This is the only concealer in this group that was sent in PR, everything else I purchased. This is $12 for 0.23 ounces. It comes in 16 shades and I got it in the shade 205 Creamy Beige. According to L'Oreal, this is formulated with hydrating serum and glycerin. It's supposed to minimize the appearance of imperfections and dark circles, brighten skin, creating a radiant complexion, and does not settle into lines. Really? Okay, in use, this is a lightweight sheer concealer and it has a flat wand. This has a fairly emollient feel, but yet it was kind of hard to get it to blend evenly and hard to get it to look seamless. The coverage was a low medium with the first pass, so I added a little bit more to the inner corner to try to build it up, and it has a very, very luminous finish. Adding setting powder reduces the luminosity, but doesn't make it look dry or crepey. It gives a sheer, natural, hydrated look, both with and without setting powder. At four hours from a distance, the set side still looked pretty good and not dry or cakey. The unset side had settled into wrinkles and it's much more worn off than the side with the setting powder. The setting powder side still looks Pretty good overall with only minor settling into wrinkles at the inner corner. At the eight hour check-in, I thought it looked okay from a distance, especially on the set side. But up close, both sides have settling into wrinkles. Still settled in wrinkles, pretty worn off. And pretty worn off and less settled in wrinkles. It's definitely not cakey looking and the skin does look hydrated. So it definitely lived up to its marketing claims that it was hydrating, it was radiant and brightening, but unfortunately it just didn't live up to that not settling into the lines claim. But I didn't think it was bad. I thought that there were definitely some people who would like this a lot. Um, definitely people with drier skin, with fewer fine lines who like a radiant finish and a really natural look. All right, next up is Dermablend Cover Care Full Coverage Concealer. This retails for $28 for 0.33 ounces. It comes in 16 shades. I got it in the shade 23N. And according to Dermablend, this is their best concealer for under eyes, and it provides one coat coverage with 24 hour wear and hydration. They say it's full coverage, creamy, lightweight, with a soft matte finish. So this concealer has a thick emollient consistency with an oversized doe foot applicator. It blends really easily without being patchy. It's not as full coverage as I was expecting on the first pass. A little bit of this goes a long way and so I ended up having to blend it down onto my cheeks where it skipped over my pores and accentuated them. So I put the setting powder on the set eye and that really mattified it down but overall i really like how this one looks with setting powder when smiling my wrinkles don't look any worse but pores on my cheeks are definitely accentuated after four hours of wear there is the tiniest bit of settling under the unset eye it's getting a tiny bit thin in the inner corner not bad and the set eye 
I think still looks good. At eight hours, the Derma Blend still looks good from a distance. Up close, it's more worn off on the non-set side, but both sides are looking about half worn off with settling in wrinkles at the inner corner, but only minor settling in under eye wrinkles. All right, that was fast. We're up to the top two already. So in second to best place is Tarte Creaseless Concealer. This retails for $26 for 0.225 ounces. It comes in 30 shades. I got it in the shade 20N Light, which is a little bit too light for me. The marketing hype is that this one is a full coverage creamy concealer slash eye cream hybrid. It is waterproof, doesn't crease, or sit in lines and offers 16 hour hydration. So this is a really thick, really sticky formula with a flat sponge wand applicator, but wow is the coverage solid and a little bit of this stuff goes a long, long way. Even though it gives good coverage, it doesn't blend evenly because it clings to dry skin, but it does feel very emollient and hydrating. It has a very luminous finish that accentuates under eye puffiness when not set with powder. The side set with powder looks so smooth and perfect when I'm not smiling, but unfortunately when I smile, my big smile, my wrinkles look a little bit bigger. At the four hour check-in, it seems much less worn off than the other concealers and still very hydrated looking, even on the side with the setting powder. There's a tiny bit of settling on the set side, both under the eye and in the inner corner, and the same on the non-set side but otherwise the coverage is still looking really, really solid. By eight hours, the settling and creasing is pretty major in large wrinkles on the unset side. Because it's greasy, it also made my mascara smudge. There's very little wear at the inner corner on both eyes and very little wear or settling on the set eye. On both eyes, the coverage is still mainly in place. So this is definitely going to be the best one for dark under eye circles. All right, and last and therefore the best one in this round of testing is Lancome Mackie Complet Complete Coverage Concealer. This retails for $31 for point two three ounces. It comes in 27 shades. I wear it in 220 buff light buff. I think a lot of my regular viewers already know that this is my holy grail under eye concealer, but I didn't want to just test a bunch of other things. I wanted to test it against all of these to see if it really was the best one still or if I could find something better because, you know, I am always looking for the next best thing as you guys are too. Anyway, but the marketing on this from Lancome is that it's a creamy liquid concealer that hides flaws, blemishes, and dark circles with full natural looking coverage. So this is a lightweight liquid hydrating concealer with a regular size doe foot applicator. It offers sheer to medium coverage with the first coat and adding a tiny bit more at the inner corners disguises my darkness really well. It's easy to blend and it looks seamless without accentuating pores. The finish is luminous, which of course accentuates my under eye puffiness, but it does look hydrating and it is brightening. With setting powder, it looks smooth, but not heavy or dry or cakey. After four hours of wear, the unset side is showing a little bit of wear at the inner corner and settling into wrinkles under the eye. The set side is less worn off, so the coverage is still good at the inner corner. There's no settling into large under eye wrinkles, but small diagonal wrinkles are a little bit more visible. At eight hours, the coverage is still in place on the set eye, but very worn off on the non-set eye. When smiling, large wrinkles don't look larger or more prominent. On the set side, my under eyes don't look dry or cakey, and wrinkles, discoloration, and pores are still minimized. All right, so the takeaways from this video. Number one, Mackie Complet from Lancome is the winner for me. It has the amount of coverage that I like. It looks the way I like it to, and it lasts the way I like it to. Definitely lasted better than all of these guys. Takeaway number two, setting powder is definitely your concealer's friend. 
without it, your mascara and your eyeliner smudge with the emollient concealers, and your concealer definitely settles more and wears off faster without setting powder. But if you want to see a detailed video on how I apply under eye concealer with all my best tips and tricks for how to keep it from creasing, I have a whole video on that. It's a really great video that's helped a lot of people. I'll link that video right up here for you to go over and watch. And of course, I mentioned it in the beginning of the video. Let me just mention it again. It is the It Cosmetics HD Bye Bye Pores Powder. It's the loose powder. I like this one better than the pressed powder in the compact. Now, for those of you who have different under eyes than me, I have some recommendations based on the things in this video. The Tarte Creaseless Concealer could definitely be really awesome for people with really, really dry skin or for people with really, really dark circles. This one seemed to give the most solid coverage, where the coverage lasted the longest, and it also was definitely hydrating. This thing is so emollient. It will keep your under eyes hydrated, even if you do add setting powder with it, as you saw. So the best for dry skin with minimal darkness, I would say to go for the L'Oreal Age Perfect. This one is really for people who like a nice natural looking makeup or who don't wear any makeup at all, but still have a little bit of a something underneath their eyes that they want to correct. I thought that this one was really natural looking but really hydrating. And then the best concealer for oily skin I think is the Dermablend. I felt like this was kind of dry looking on me but if you had super oily skin that that would help to keep it in place and help it to last longer on your more oily under eyes. So anyway there are four concealers that I can highly recommend to you guys and so I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell while you're down there. As always, you guys, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.